Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one -one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. Equity in QuickBooks Online. Kind of like equity anywhere else. The equity section of your balance sheet represents the book value of your business. If I started a business today and I had no transactions yet and I opened up my bank account with $100, right? Let's make it 1000 Let's open up the bank account with $1,000. The value of my business is $1,000. It's exactly the cash that I have in the bank. And if you run the balance sheet, when you make that initial entry, you would see you record a deposit for $1,000 and you would post that deposit to the appropriate equity account. <coughs> and then when you run that balance sheet, you'll see that's the whole of the books. There'd be nothing on the P&L, no income or expenses recorded yet. All you would have is a bank account balance with $1,000. And the equity section showing $1,000 has been contributed into the business. Book value, $1,000. So that's the book value. That's equity in a nutshell. It represents what is the business worth today at a moment in time. It's a snapshot, right? That's what the balance sheet is. Anything in the balance sheet represents a snapshot of that particular part, right? We have the three basic parts. We have assets, the things we own or have rights to, liabilities, the things we owe, obligations that we have to pay. And the difference between the two is, of course, the equity or the book value of the business. So it's important, especially for me as an accountant, setting up the books for companies to make sure that I have an understanding of the ownership in that company to make sure that I set up the equity section of the balance sheet correctly. And that's the first thing I want to show you actually in this video. Let's take a look. Um, I've uh, gutted out one of my sample files here. So there's a bunch of accounts and things in here from prior videos that I've done. But you'll see the equity section is pretty bare because I haven't done any videos on equity yet. Until now. This is a very special time for us here at Nerd Enterprises. No, I'm kidding. So here's the equity, right? These are kind of the standard accounts that come with any new company that you set up in QuickBooks Online. I have opening balance equity, um, which has its place very minimally, should really be avoided at all costs uh, using that. We have owner contributions, and then I have retained earnings, which I mentioned in the write-up, I believe. So retained earnings is just the accumulation of the uh, the of, of the, all the years that you're in business, all the net income and losses, and you're going to see exactly what that looks like by the end of this video. So stick around. This is exciting stuff. It doesn't get much more exciting than this. So we're going to create the equity section, assuming we have two owners. Let's assume it's a corporation, so it's going to be shareholders, right? And we're going to create the three accounts that I describe in the write-up uh, that are sub-accounts of the main capital account, okay? So let's do that. We're going to come over to our, uh, actually right here at the top of our chart of accounts, we're going to choose new. And the account type is going to be equity. The detail type, uh, you can just call it partner's equity. I don't know why it says partner specifically. That might have been, maybe I set up the company that, that way as a partnership. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to call it shareholder. And actually, we're going to call it Seth David Capital, right? Because this is my, you know, for my ownership. And I'm going to say save and new because I want to create several accounts here, right? And we'll wait for QuickBooks to catch up. So another equity account. We'll call this owner's equity. Actually, this detail type doesn't really matter that much. Um, I did partner before. Um, so let's just call this uh, partner contributions, right? Because then this is going to be shareholder contributions. And I put my name in every one of these on purpose. I put the owner's name in every... Don't put my name on it unless I unless you want to give me ownership in your company. But I put the owner's name on purpose in every iteration of the account that's associated with them, mainly because that helps you find it in a drop down when you're trying to record a transaction, right? So always think ahead about these things. All right, so that's contributions, then we'll need distributions. All right, so again, equity. This time we'll call it partner distributions, but we're actually going to call it shareholder. And again, I'll put my name in there. And I forgot to make the other one a sub account. There's a 
I need shareholder capital, right? So if I type my name, there's Seth David Capital. See? Uh, and then save and do. We want one more. Paid in capital or surplus or owner's equity is good. We can call it paid in capital. It's fine. Um, so this is going to be capital. Seth. David, shareholder capital, we'll call it. And this is going to be a sub account of Seth David Capital. And then I have to fix my one account that I didn't make a sub account. So now if I type Seth, see how nice that is? Makes it really easy to find them. This has to get edited. And we make a sub account of Seth David Capital. Save, and now we're gonna create another owner. So new, equity, we'll call it uh, partner's equity. Okay, and we'll call this, I don't know, Matthew Fulton. Matthew will be very excited, he made it into my video. Capital. Uh, no dash. I'm looking in the background. I didn't do a dash on mine. I'm not going to do, do a dash on his. Consistency. It's really important, especially when you're <coughs> later going to run the balance sheet. If you're not really consistent in how you name things, it just looks sloppy and messy, and it makes it harder to read. Okay, so save and new. And again, we're doing equity. This time we'll do contributions. Shareholder. Contributions. These do get a dash. Okay, sub account, Matthew. Save and new. Again, equity is going to be distributions. And again, Matthew Fulton. Sub account, Matthew. One more time. Equity. Okay, so three accounts each is sub accounts of their main capital account, right? That's what we need. Save and close. Let's search for Matthew. And there it is, shareholder capital. Okay. Let's uh, pull that out on the search and we'll just scroll down to the equity section just so we can see. So there's Matthew Fulton Capital. Okay, and then we have the three, right? Shareholder capital contributions and distributions. Right? Capital contributions distributions. <clears throat> so here it is in the chart of accounts. Now, let's take a look at what this uh kind of looks like when we start having some activity on the book. So we're just going to post an invoice so let's post an invoice. We're going to go here. We're going to create a new invoice. We're going to invoice always right. My favorite customer. We're going to invoice him for some rental income. $1,000. Save and close. Okay, let's go to reports. Let's run a profit and loss. And there's rental income. No other expenses, no other income, nothing else on the books other than this rental income. So we have 1,000 in income and 1,000 in net income because there's no expenses going against that. Let's look at what happens on the balance sheet. <clears throat> on the balance sheet, I've got $1,000 in accounts receivable and the $1,000 from net income flowing over from the profit and loss notice closes to that net income account. I mentioned this in the write-up right? That net income for year to date, whatever it happens to be, and as of the date that I'm running the balance sheet, will close out to the equity section to get it to balance, right? So that's how my balance sheet balances in this case. I have $1,000 in receivables, $1,000 in net income. Total assets is the same as total liabilities and equity combined, right? So what happens now is that after I get over into next year, let's say nothing else happened for the whole year, 
After we cross over into the following year, let's run this as of 1-1-2020, right? And we'll say 0-1-0-5-20. Not that it matters that much, but once I cross over into the next year, this $1,000 is going to close out from here to retained earnings. So let's run that. Okay. And sure enough, that's what happens because QuickBooks automatically does a closing entry as of the end of the calendar year or if you've established one the fiscal year. So the first day of the next year, it takes whatever that cumulative net income was and closes it out to retained earnings. Now, if nothing else happened on the books here, then we would want to divide this $1,000, assuming Matthew and I were 50-50 uh, or we're each 50% shareholders in the company, we would want to divide that up amongst our capital accounts and we'd want to do it on the first of the following year. So we take it out of retained earnings and distribute it. Quick journal entry just to illustrate this. So I'm going to date this 1-1-2020. One, one, okay, and it's going to come out of retained earnings for $1,000. Now, Equity accounts work like liability accounts. If you don't know your debits and credits, go look up my video on YouTube called Bookkeeping Basics with QuickBooks Online. I'll teach you all the debits and credits in about a half an hour, right? So equity accounts work just like liabilities in terms of debits and credits, meaning they're increased by credits and they're decreased by debits. So we want to take 1000 out of retained earnings and put 500 each into mine and Matthew's capital or paid-in surplus accounts, right? So this is going to come out of retained earnings. And this is, again, look how nice this is. I type my name. Uh, it goes into shareholder capital, Seth David, because that's where I keep track of my share of the net income. Here I'll type Matthew, shareholder capital, Matthew. And now, since we're 50-50 shareholders, we each get 50% of the net income on the first day of the following year. If I save and close, the balance sheet gets updated, or it should. I have to update the dates again. And sure enough, here it is. So notice no more retained earnings. That's zero because we took it out of there. Matthew's got 500. I've got 500. So these are not contributions, right? We didn't contribute this money. We performed well. The company made money. We each get our share. Now I can take a distribution up to $500 without my equity going negative. And that's a question that actually came up on YouTube on an older video that I had done about shareholder contributions and distributions. And he asked, could, the, could my uh, equity account go negative? He didn't think it could. Turns out it can. Of course, in theory, the only way um, I could draw this money out, especially looking at this scenario, is first of all, this account receivable has to get collected, right? Otherwise, we don't have any money in a bank account. So assuming the account receivable got collected, yeah, Matthew and I could each take our 500 out. We couldn't take more than that. There simply wouldn't be enough in there. So how is it possible that there could be enough money to take out more than your share of the earnings over time. A, you could have contributed money previously, so, so that's where money might be available for you to, to withdraw from. The other way is how else does money get into a company besides through earning it? Uh, either we borrowed money from the bank or from somebody else. Of course, the person who loaned us money probably wouldn't be too happy if they looked at the balance sheet and realized that we apparently took the money that they invested in the company and took it out in the form of distributions. But that's a whole different conversation. The bottom line is mathematically, that's how it could happen because we could b borrow money from somebody. So we'd have a liability on the books for, let's say, $100,000. And then Matthew and I could just, you know, go party in Vegas and draw that money out in the form of distributions, it would push our equity negative because there'd be no equity from that 100000 right? That 100000 would simply be money that went into the bank and it's offset by the liability right here on the balance sheet. So that would be, and then, then if we took it out, we had the cash in the bank account to take out more than our 500 share of earnings. That's how you can end up with negative equity. It's not unheard of and it's not wrong. It's totally fine to have negative equity. It just means you've taken out more than you've earned plus whatever you might have contributed over the years since the company was started. That's your overview on equity in QuickBooks Online. That's equity in QuickBooks Online Explained. And check it out because in the write-up, I'll have the link. We're going to be posting a follow-up on contributions separately and then another follow-up separately on distributions in QuickBooks Online. We're going to explain it all. So stick around and click over and look for the description. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, let me know. You know how to do it. Just do it, and I'll see you around on the web.